Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at uh, Newtonian physics. We're looking at Newton's laws and trying to get our head around forces a little bit. So what is a force? Uh, obviously Star Wars is, goes on and on and on about the force and what that is. Uh, we're going to have something a little more simple, uh, but it kind of is also there as well. A force is ultimately a push or a pull that causes an object to stop moving or to change direction. We measure these in newtons. Okay? Obviously, Jedi use telekinesis to push and pull objects at a distance, so you can actually see them exerting force throughout the various movies, but ultimately we're going to stick ourselves into the, the realm of just pushes and pulls that are causing an object to stop or change directions. So, real quick, let's wrap our heads around what a Newton is. So, a Newton is this new variable that we're going to use, not a variable, new unit to, that we're going to use to try to measure um, forces. It would take three Newtons to lift a full can of soda. It's not much when you think about it. Three Newtons to lift a can of soda really is not a lot. So that hopefully gets your head around it because we've probably all lifted uh, a can of, of Coke or, or whatever. Ultimately, a Newton is the amount of force needed to accelerate a kilogram of mass by a meter per second squared. Meter per second squared is a really weird unit. Um, it's a unit for acceleration. And kids see the seconds being squared and they feel they need to do something to the number. Like they need to square the number or something. What it really says is that in every second, it's going to increase its speed or velocity by a meter per second. So the rate is going up by the acceleration. That's a key concept. Acceleration is the rate of change for your velocity. So what this says is that a force accelerates a mass. That's what a Newton does. It accelerates a mass. Newtons are very small. Okay? Like I said, three Newtons... For lifting a can of soda to your mouth. It's not that big of a number. Or not that big of a unit. Another thing that comes up when we're talking about these forces is this idea that you can have a net force. So a lot of times we're going to have multiple forces acting together. And they're going to combine some sort of net force. So two people pushing on a car would create a net force. And that net force would actually be not only the two people pushing on the car, but the friction of the road pushing against them. So your net force is what happens after all the forces are looked at. And we're actually going to have a whole separate video dealing with a way of looking at these called free body diagrams. When forces are balanced, people don't move. So if we're having a tug of war and both sides are balanced, the forces are negating each other, then neither side is going to move. But if the forces became unbalanced, then one side's going to accelerate into the other. This is kind of a big concept, and we're going to spend a lot of time looking at this, because ultimately, if we want an object to move, it's going to have to experience an unbalanced force. So to describe all these things, we have what are called Newton's Laws of Motion. Okay, there's three of them. We're going to go through each of them here in this video real quick. The first law is that an object in motion stays in motion. Well, an object at rest stays at rest. Okay? 
unless acted upon by an outside force. The Greeks actually thought that the natural state of an object was being at rest. Okay, So they looked at the world and they're like, hey, the ball stops moving. It's got to be that, you know, this is how things are. Everything wants to stop. Well, the Greeks didn't have the concept of friction yet. Okay, that came a lot later. So friction would be the ob thing that stops something from moving. But without that friction, an object in motion would stay in motion. This is really called inertia. Uh, you may remember inertia from uh, Bill Nye videos. Uh, it's in the opening theme. They're like, inertia is a property of matter. Uh, inertia is a property of matter. It's the property of matter that resists a change in motion. Whether that change is to stop moving or to start moving. Inertia ultimately is the property of matter that says, I don't want to change. And ultimately, an object with a lot of mass has a lot of inertia. Try moving furniture sometime. And the mass of that furniture has a lot of inertia. Newton's second law of motion is that the sum of the forces will equal the mass of an object times its acceleration. So remember we were discussing net forces a second ago? Well, here's the situation where we got some net forces going on. We have two ladies, they're pushing a car. The road is obviously opposing that motion. We've got also some other forces as well. We got the road pushing up on the car because the car's not falling through it. And we got gravity pulling down on the car. Now the forces of the car being held up by the road and pushed down by gravity, those actually cancel out. We'll talk about those forces in depth at another time. Um, the real important ones as far as moving a car are the force of the two people pushing it and the force of the friction opposing that motion. So the sum of those forces, the net force, will be equal to the mass of the car, in this case, times the acceleration of the car. Otherwise known as force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. Ultimately, the two vectors from um, the ladies pushing the car are going to add together. We're going to subtract off the friction, and that net force is what's going to be used to see how far or how fast the car accelerates. If forces are balanced, what that means is that they cancel each other out, much like our tug of war situation. Ultimately, gravity and what we call the normal force balance each other out. Okay, so the normal force is the force of the ground pressing up on the object. Okay, so ultimately, if the ground was pushing up with more force than gravity, things would fly off of the ground. If gravity were pulling us down with greater force than the ground holds us up, we would fall through it. So it's got to be that the ground and gravity balance each other out. The only way that the car can accelerate in the previous example is if the two women pushing it manage to create an unbalanced force against the friction. So if their force combined together exceeds the force of the friction stopping the road, stopping the car from moving, then the car will accelerate. Newton's third law is probably the one you know the most. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, this is a, a bridge out in, I think it's in Sydney. It's somewhere in Australia. I think it's in Sydney. Um, ultimately what you do on this bridge is you get to bounce. It's a giant balloon. So it's a giant trampoline like balloon 
crossing um, this body of water. And ultimately, if you bounce on the balloon, the balloon's going to apply an opposite force and pop you back up into the air, which creates a lot of fun. Okay, uh, We've actually done balloon-powered racers in the past, uh, wherein you put a balloon inside a Kinex car and you let uh, the balloon power the Kinex car um, and the direction that the air is blowing out of the balloon is going to be the opposite of the direction that the car is rolling in uh, for the exact same reason as this. Now, it's really important to understand that just because forces are equal and opposite, according to, to Newton's third law, the result in acceleration isn't always equal and opposite, or well, isn't going to give the same results, Okay. So here you have an object with a lot of mass and an object with not much mass. The, the full-size sumo wrestler here is going to likely smush the child if they were to collide with full force because the sumo wrestler has a lot of mass. The sumo wrestler's mass means that when the child collides with him, it's not going to do too much to him. But if the sumo wrestler collides with the child, it's going to do a lot to the child. Okay? Think about bugs splattering on a windshield. Right? Your car gets hit by a bug. The bug goes splat on the windshield. The car experiences the same force as the bug. The result of the car getting hit by the bug is that the car doesn't care. The result of the bug getting hit by the car is that the car literally just splats the bug it accelerates it to death so the result of collisions can be very different depending upon the masses or the difference in masses of the two objects involved so let's take a look at some examples here and try to figure out which law we are looking at here so here um, there is an apple. The apple's been shot by something. Ultimately, I am seeing acceleration happening. So F equals MA, the second law is occurring. Notice here what's going on with the apple. The apple in the center is still together. So even though there's been a bullet going through this apple the inertia of the apple has held it together and in place. A very similar thing is going on here. Uh, so here you've taken a pellet gun and you've shot an egg. And as you shoot this egg, for a moment, there is no raw egg splattering over everything because inertia is going to keep things in place despite the acceleration that is occurring because of the unbalanced force of the pellet colliding with the egg. A sprinkler system, on the other hand, gives us some other things to think about. The sprinkler is causing an action-reaction kind of situation. As the water is going through it, it's causing the, the sprinkler to move around and spin around a little bit, spreading the water around. Inertia can be seen as the water, look at the way the water is spread about. Do you see that? Do you see how it's kind of like coming out in little strips and stuff? So you have this inertial effect happening to the water as it's coming out of the sprinkler systems. Here we have a golfer. It's our last example here we're going to look at. Uh, now the golfer is going through the golf stroke. Uh, hitting the ball, and uh, he's got a decent follow-through. So first off, we have F equals MA, of course. We're applying an unbalanced force to the golf ball to cause it to move. Uh, inertia is, of course, keeping the golf ball uh, from wanting to move. It's keeping the golfer from wanting to move. And as the golfer's motion is going through the swing of the club, he's actually having an action-reaction situation going on within him. Okay, so Newton's laws apply to like all sorts of scenarios. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about them. 
and kind of digging into them. And in fact, we're going to start by looking at uh, race cars. Uh, so we're going to look at race cars that are going to be powered by rubber bands. That's our uh, first real physics lab that we're tackling here. Um, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I hope you guys have a good night. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye.